Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV. I'm here with Ray. Hi guys, how you doing? Yeah, you all right? Uh, not so bad, not so bad. It's a bit cold, mate, a bit, and icy out there, but we're in winter in northern England. Well, I just came home and it was like minus two in my car, and that was at what, two, three o'clock in the afternoon, so God knows what it's going to be like tonight. I had a message from a mate who uh, lives in Iowa, and uh, minus 46 degrees. Uh, well, and we're complaining at minus two. <laughs> minus 46 degrees, Jesus. Uh, I think the lowest I bet, I bet their paints are still running at minus 46. They well, were... you know, they're doing the pictures of them lighting coals underneath the uh, train tracks. So they, you know, melting away. I think the coldest I've ever been is minus 35. And that was in uh, Saskatoon in the middle of Canada. Uh, but uh, minus 46, crazy. But anyway. What we're doing today is we're just uh, obviously it's transfer deadline window day and uh, yeah it doesn't look like there's going to be any signings. Pep's been pretty adamant throughout uh, the last couple of months and and uh, with questions from journalists etc in press conferences. I think he's getting a bit pissed off with it and keeps saying I'll say it again and you can ask me tomorrow and I hope the win can't wait for this day coming and we're not signing anybody but we have got a little bit of news for you. Now uh, probably teasing you a little bit with this but uh, what uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the in so far since uh, the summer and uh, we'll look at how much they cost and how much we've spent in total and we'll go through each one and then we're also going to have a look at who we've sold and who we got rid of and there's a massive list for those and we'll look at how much money we've got in some of them are undisclosed so we can't add them to the figures and what we're going to do then is we're going to combine how much have we spent uh, in uh, the window and, and this season so far and compare it to how much we've actually brought in and talk a little bit just at the end about City's sort of model um, and the way it's going. We have spoken about it before, um, but we're just seeing as though it's transfer window deadline day. Uh, we're going to just briefly cover it and there's been a couple of articles today, one in particular by Jamie Jackson uh, talking about City's model, comparing it to Chelsea's. And I think he's right uh, at the end of the day. So let's start off with this uh, little bit of news. Uh, and it's one of those that you can take with a pinch of salt. But uh, it's somebody called Luciano Acosta. Uh, ever heard of him, Ray? <laughs> Never heard of him. Never heard but of him. This guy plays for DC United with Wayne Rooney. Um, he's ex Boca Juniors. He went on loan and is now permanently with DC United. Um, he's so far, he's played 64 games, scored 15 goals. He's a playmaker, attacking playmaker, and was voted last season uh, in the MLS Best 11. Uh, he's only 24 years of age, and if rumours are true, he's currently in Europe right now, uh, awaiting a medical with a club. And this has come from some sort of source close to Acosta, and they're basically saying we don't want to be named because there are several clubs involved. But PSG apparently are very keen on signing him. It doesn't surprise me that he's in Europe. Uh, Manchester City have been named as a club that want to uh, pursue him and uh, and another. Uh, but that club does not want to be named in there. Now, there was uh, not so long ago a transfer uh, bid by the Saudi Arabian team uh, Al-Hilal uh, was for £5.7 million. That was turned away immediately by DC United. So it looks like if whoever wants to bring him in, and it looks like it will be potentially a permanent deal, are going to have to pay more than £5.7 million for him. So, Ray, I know you don't know anything about him. I only found this news out just uh, just recently. So, uh, yeah, thoughts on us potentially signing up another playmaker? The only, the only thing I know about him is he's a tiny sign. He's only five foot three tall, which mm. is one meter sixty in new money. Um, so it's it's unusual. I can't see us signing a twenty four year old that most of us have never heard of. That's going to end up playing for Man City unless you unless you follow the MLS sort of yeah. very closely. Yeah. So unless you know, we, we we generally don't sign older players anymore. I mean, last summer we signed Mares. I think that's the exception to the rule. I think a couple of seasons back we got Gundogan. Um, but generally, what what we're buying to actually play for City is players like Leroy Sane, really yeah. young Gabby Jesus, 
really young. You know, they're, they're like 18, 19, 20 years old when we're buying them. And they're ready to, they're ready at that age to be part of the first team squad. Anybody else we buy uh, a younger age, let's say, and cheap, they're there to go uh, in the EDS or go on loan. And we're going to talk about it as we have, uh, as you've already mentioned, that model of loaning and then selling them on after a year or two. So that's my feeling is I can't see uh, any reason why we would sign a 24-year-old. The only, thing or, I, the, only, the only thing I'll come back to you with is exactly your point. Why would we be in to purchase, not loan, purchase somebody at 24 years of age from the MLS if we're going to loan them out? The old, in, in January now, per se. Like yeah. I said, we, 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 we'll talk about Anthony Palaversa, who we've already discussed in depth on yeah. previous videos, but a 24-year-old playmaker who's been voted in the MLS Best 11 last season, why suddenly at the 11th well, hour are we going in for somebody like this if we're going to loan them straight back out again? Yeah. It, I've got two points. Um, one, it just could be we can see value in this kid. It's We can see that we can get this kid for, for argument's sake, seven or eight million quid, and in a year's time, he, in Europe, once he's in Europe, I think that'll make a, a big difference to uh, someone's price tag. Get him over here, and suddenly he could be worth 15 million. I mean, yeah. I can talk about a few people we've done something like that with. We've got this Turkish kid, Enis Unal, and I think we paid two million quid for him. We sent him out on loan for a season. He had a great season um, and scored a lot of goals, and he got a permanent move for about 12 million quid. We did it with Aaron Moy. Yeah. And we got him from our sister club uh, in, uh, in Australia, um, Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne City, that's right. And we got him for peanuts. Yeah. Uh, we actually bought the club and um, we got him as part of that. And then we, we got him over here into Europe a, a year with Huddersfield and they paid about 10, 10 million quid for him. So what, you, what, what you're saying is it's, it's an, an, an 11th hour sort of opportunity investment in a player if he's coming on the market. Let's grab him now cheap and potentially send him back to DC or put him in the squad or... Send him on loan or something like that. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Well, that's it. I, I think City are more than just a football club. We have to ex uh, accept that they're a business and businesses take investment decisions. And, you know, we'll talk about that. I mentioned again about the, the academy and the players we get there. And this just could be seen as an opportunity to get someone in relatively um, cheaply. Yeah. Um, and then once he's in Europe and people can see him, put the price up. I will because it's changed from the model. I mean, this guy is 24 years of age. He's not 18. He's not 19. He's, well, he's, he's an established MLS player. Well, I think you know there's there's a possibility that we're still getting a lot of kids, but you know they'll come to a point where we can't keep doing it with these 16, 17, 18 year olds. We've got to look to diversify our risk and look at other ways to make money. And as I said, if we get this kid for fragments of a million. He spends a year, 18 months in, in uh, Europe and then he shows his worth and then other people can really see him. Yeah. This kid will take a chance and he ends up being sold for 15 million quid. Then, you know, it's a great investment decision. And I, th I think that's what it is, business. The only person I, I can recall who I think we bought over the age that I would have expected was Philip, uh, Philip Sandler. Uh, we got him from Holland. Uh, FC, I can't say the name. Um, PEC Zwoll, Zwoll. I mean, I, I did put, a, I did a video on him. I remember, and the, I think the club came back and told me, "This is how you say our name." Yeah, yeah. So I apologise, uh, PEC Zwoll. I apologise in advance. And oh, we got, yeah, I think we got him at 21 years old, which right. for me was older than what we'd normally get. And he was unusual because he'd been released by Ajax. And so he'd moved down to play for, for Zvol. Uh, and you think, and we got him relatively cheaply. So it's like, why would Ajax release somebody that a year or two later would come to Man City and, uh, and no one else was interested? And uh, we've seen he's, he's got, uh, I think he's had a couple of games uh, in, in, uh, in the Cup, in the Carabao Cup, I think, possibly the FA Cup. So, no, no, I don't think the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, sorry. So he, he, he kind of, defies the, the mould that we've kind of got with these 16, 17, 18 year old kids. So, but I just think City have to do things differently because it's about making money. Well, maybe, well, maybe we'll talk about that at the end and we'll talk because that's something we are going to discuss. But 
just thought we'd bring you that breaking news anyway. I mean, there's, like I said, there's not a lot going on for us today. We've not been linked with anybody else. It's just this one kid. It's Luke true. Costa. What about Isco? Isco. <laughs> yeah, what about it? Um, let's, 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 let, let's park Isco. Uh, <laughs> I think we've fed up of speaking for the last 18 months about Isco. Um, it's like the Frankie Beyonce nonsense. Oh. Um, but anyway, looking through then, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just talk about the ins, the people we've had in, the, the players that have been confirmed uh, into City since the summer, because after tonight, obviously, there's no more signing. So that is pretty much it. That is that is who we bought or who we've sold. So we'll <clears throat> we'll look at the ins first. And the first one is the goalkeeper uh, from Columbus Crew, and that's Zach Stefan. Um, he is back with, or he stayed with, <clears throat> he stayed with Columbus Crew um, until July, I think it's 2019, and uh, he's going to stay there until there's going to be issues resolved. Now, what are your thoughts very quickly, because we've got an awful lot to cover here, so I just want, don't go in five-minute rants on, on each <laughs> one, just, just tell me, £7 million we paid for him. Uh, looks a good prospect. I saw videos of him over the weekend of making some wonderful saves again. Uh, comes to City, or do you think he's going to be a loan signing in Europe? Uh, I think he's going to be coming to City. I think from, you know, it, we're taking a punt here, but I, I think from what I've read, he, and, and I've seen a little bit, obviously, we, once we get a player, we, you, you start taking notice of what's uh, yeah. you and whatever. And I think he's. Um, uh, I think that's why we bought him. We wouldn't pay seven. I don't think pay seven million quid. Uh, I don't. I can't remember how old he is. Um, how old is he? He's only young. He's yeah. only twenty three, is he? I think. I, I need to look up, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I think a goalkeeping situation is a bit muddy because Claudio Bravo's uh, injured, um, and we had to get Murich back. Now I think. The plans with Murich was he's going to get that one loan away from City, and then we'd sell him. Or if he was really good enough, he'd come back. As I don't, I didn't see him as a number two, to be honest. Unless he could challenge um, Edison for the number one jersey. And the fact that he that Murich is here this season, I, it makes me feel that next season he'll go out on loan, and either Bravo will come back as number two. Although I think his contract ventures this summer, um, but Claudio Bravo is an ideal number two because he's not. No, he's yeah, happy to sit there. Yeah. I just, I, I can see Zach Stefan coming in for a season at least as a backup to um, Edison, and actually to put some pressure on him because right now Edison's got no pressure on him um, by a, any of our goalkeepers. So he's got a free rent, and you don't want that situation where a player feels that um, he's always going to be selected. Right. Well, I'm going to move you on because I said not five minutes worth, but you've just done nearly five minutes worth on just one thing. So we've got about another 20 things to think of. So let's keep the next one short. Um, Daniel Alzani, we bought from Melbourne City for 500,000, went to Celtic. Uh, he's only played one game since the uh, loan move. Uh, loan, stay, comes to City. Briefly, he got injured in Celtic in his first game. He's back at City. Um, I, I think it's a, a, a cruciate or something like that, a, a knee injury, something like a ligament injury. So he'll be out by the looks of things for a, a six months. Poor lad. He's got a lot of potential. As soon as he's fit, he's going to go out on loan again because he was at Celtic for 18 months or, or two years or whatever it was. He'll go out on loan again. He's a kid that I don't expect to see play for Man City. Um, fair enough. Uh, next one we got, which was on a free transfer, which we did that massive video on, which got... Can't remember how many, 14, 13, 14,000 views that caused a load of havoc in Paris, and that was Claudio Gomez. Yeah. We got him on a free from PSG. We've uh, we've yet to see him in the first team uh, in, in any sort of serious competition. Um, what do you think is going to happen with him maybe today or uh, no. in the summer? I don't expect anything today. I expect him to go out and loan in the summer. Um, he... I saw him play for the for, for the you know, academy or the EDS or whatever whatever they want to call it now, um, and he was all right. But he he never whenever I've seen him play, he he's never stood out. Um, 
and you never thought, yes, this guy should be playing around the first team. That 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 was my, that was it. your that explanation there sums up my thoughts on him. Is that when you see Eric Garcia at same age, yeah, you see Claudio Gomez. All right, different positions, but just it's like. Rock and cheese. But it could could have been anybody. Could have been anybody from the academy. Any seventeen year, eighteen year old. It wasn't like, oh my god, look at that bit of skill. Look at that. It was just a sort of okay. Fine, fair enough. You're bang on because every time you see Eric Garcia, it's like, wow, this yeah. kid can play. This kid's got composure. He's got confidence. He's directing more senior defenders. You know, he's yeah. telling Otto Mendy what what to do. Um, so he's. For me, anyway, with my limited knowledge and expertise, he's the real deal. Claudio Gomez has got, you know, a lot to show me before I think, yeah, he's a real deal. So, lo- so loan in the summer. summer. Loan in the summer. Uh, I think he needs it. He needs some game time. Uh, but he's very well thought of, certainly by the PSG fans. Were pretty upset when we got him, and you, yeah, spoke, yeah. To, you spoke to quite a lot of them. Um, in the summer, um, obviously Riyad Mahrez not going to go into any talk about him, but sixty million pounds. Uh, we're not going to go there. Um, confirmed today, definitely signed is Anti Palaversa uh, for four point one million. Uh, he's gone back on loan to Hadjuk Split. How long for? Well, at least twelve months, possibly eighteen months. I think it's. I think City are going to monitor his progress um, for the remainder of the season and certainly into next season. See how he goes. He'll be a year older. He'll be 19 uh, by January next year, uh, nearly 20. So I think I think, uh, I think think City will just keep an eye on him. Yeah. They've got high hopes for him. They really sort of think he's the real deal. But he's only a kid, and there's no way he's a replacement for Fernandinho. So we know there's no point discussing it. We know he's gone back to Hadjuk. So if, it, look, if, if anybody wants to know more, go and look at your previous video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did, yeah, did videos on him. Three four weeks ago, um, so uh, yeah, so that's at least with you know, he's under 19 captain, so uh, you know, Pep or the team certainly uh, think highly of him to spend 4.1 million on him. So, I'm, um, just, say, I'm, I'm just keeping a track of what's going on, on the internet. Manchester Reading News have um, got a headline that Man City make a late attempt to beat PSG to Luciano Acosta signing on deadline. Oh! We're doing it for the Manchester Evening News. There you go. Um, anyway, let's move on to the outs. And this is just a fourth. Oh, we're going through because these, these are, the, like I said, these are the confirmed outs. We might have some more as well. But uh, first one, uh, Angelino left last summer to PSV. We got £4.95 million pounds for him. Uh, very quickly, shame or right decision? We, we followed him for a while, so... Personally, you think shame. That's yeah. what your heart says. Your head says right decision. I, the, the, the point is, he's gone at a, a, a good price. So we've not priced him out of a move to a decent club. They've got him permanently. So they're, they're going to develop him. They're going to play him. It's not like he's gone on loan for 12 months and if he has a couple of bad games, they're, they're going to discard him. They've yeah. you know, spent a decent uh, amount of money. They want him to progress. If he really, really makes it, we can buy him back. Or if they sell him, make a lot of money, then we'll get a cut. So whichever way it works for Angelina, yeah. whether he makes the grade or doesn't, City will do well out of it financially. Yeah, and, and and with a lot of these, or in many of these, there may be buy there may be buyback clauses uh, and sell on clauses as well. So okay, next one, Jacob Davenport. Jacob Davenport, um, which was a real shame because what I saw of Jacob uh, Jacob Davenport. If I can get my words out. Uh, I really, really liked him. Uh, he went on loan to Burton Albion. Uh, he's now joined permanently on a free uh, with Blackburn Rovers. Not played any games yet, but uh, so not much we can say about that. Joe Hart was the next one. 3.5 million uh, to Burnley. Again, he's gone. Uh, we've had our discussions over the last 18 months with regards to keepers and Joe Hart. Should he have come back and... Now he's struggling to get in the uh, Burnley side. Um, Will Patchin, another young kid, he went on a free uh, to Notts County. He's played five games so far this season. We then had Isaac Buckley Ricketts, which he went on loan to tw- FC20. Uh, he's now signed permanently with Peterborough United. 
undisclosed. Yeah. So we don't, we don't know what that fee was, if there was any fee, but we can't be a fee for that. Ashley Smith Brown, he was originally he went on loan to Breda. He was at Hearts. Uh, he went uh, to Oxford. Yeah. Um, he's now signed permanently. Uh, I think in the summer for Plymouth Argyle. Uh, he's played 21 games so far for them. So mm-hmm. his development is is is, and he was highly rated, I think, uh, by the academy uh, coaches. But again, an undisclosed fee. We don't know what that was. Keen Bryan from a number of years ago had been on loan. He he uh, he went to Bury and Oldham local clubs. Was doing quite well. Uh, he's at Sheffield United, but he's not played uh, so far. I don't think he well, went free. Yeah, well, Sheffield United is a, is a step up from Oldham. And, oh, absolutely, yeah. So you'd expect him to yeah. be on the fringes or in the youth team or whatever. So at least he's, still, he's at a good club and he can develop. And, and yeah. Get... Well, you only have to look at uh, what's happened with uh, my lads, mate, uh, Ben Woodburn. Sheffield United got two two appearances. Now brought back to Liverpool. Uh, and now looks like I think maybe tomorrow, I don't know, Hull City. I don't know whether I'm saying that or not, but um, I should say it or not. But uh, it looks like he's going to go on a different loan path because. Uh, but he's 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 signed permanent, Keen Brown. So good yep. luck, to the kid, and let's hope he can fight his way into the Sheffield United team. Um, Angus Gunn. That was actually I was very surprised. We got 13.5 million for Gunn for a goalkeeper. That's um, and a young kid. He was obviously on loan at Norwich. He's now at Southampton, uh, but he's only had one appearance so far, I think, for them. But uh, what were your thoughts on Gun going and the fee we got? Well, I, I, I think with the Gun going because he he had a good season at Norwich, where his uh, old man used to play um, um, mm-hmm. and manage. Um, and I was I was surprised because I thought he had the quality to uh, mm-hmm. to come back. And to fight for a, a place, so I was surprised he was sold permanently. Uh, the I'm money, I, I maybe Norwich can't afford him because I was surprised because speaking to some Norwich fans on social media, they really rated him. Oh yeah, yeah, he had a, he had a, a really really good season, yeah. which is why I thought he'd come back to City and might even fight for his place. And I mean, he even got into the okay as a um, as a as cover. He got into an England squad because I think they lost a couple of keepers and they asked him to come and uh, obviously train with the team. So I think he's got. A lot of potential. He's still what, twenty-two years old, something like that. He's still very young. Um, so I was surprised that he'd gone to Southampton, but Southampton's a decent level. And the fee, I think, once you go into a, a Premier League club, then the fee will uh, reflect um, the status of that club. So you know, or anything over ten or twelve million, it's a decent amount of money. And you can see why City sold him because he needs to develop. He won't develop under Edison, uh, fighting uh, with him for a place. Um, and we got a, a good amount of money. And there'll be a buyback car, sell on clause. So financially, City are happy. Next one, um, which is one that many a City fan over the last sort of year, 18 months of uh, of undenied about, argued about, discussed over, and that is Pablo Maffeo. Uh, I did do a video. We was including the video I did last early last week. With regards to uh, the Stuttgart manager's comments about him, yeah. and I thought were quite harsh. But really him we, 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 we're not there. We're not his manager. We don't know what his attitude is like. But clearly, the Stuttgart manager is not happy with his performances, his attitude, or whatever. But we sold him for eight point one million pounds after two loan spells at Girona. And I said in the video that I did that Messi. Yeah. Put his around him, congratulated him when he played when Girona played Barca. When Maffeo was given a man marking job on on Messi, uh, Messi just said he was absolutely wonderful. He, he, I couldn't get rid of him. So to see him move to Stuttgart, you think, well, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, we get eight point one million pounds for him. He plays six games, and now the manager's turning around and saying, basically, his attitude isn't right, his effort isn't right, and could be sold. It's a shame for the kid because I mean we like a lot of city, city fans who would you know look at the academy players and the guys who go out on loan. We really liked him and the fact that he was playing uh, for Girona in uh, La Liga and 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 actually doing quite well and Girona were doing quite well uh, last season. And um, you thought they obviously had potential to go a step higher, um, but he wouldn't do it at City again. You've got to be now to get to come back to City. You've got to be at an elite level. 
and everybody's going to be basically talking about you. Um, but, it sh- but it shows that in the games that... I mean, I watched that Girona-Barcelona yeah. game uh, and I thought he was absolutely brilliant. And I saw several other Girona games. When I, I was out, I, I can't remember where I was, I was in Malaga or somewhere and I watched the game, I think, I saw watched one game where it was pre-season against City and he was, was he playing, I think, if I remember rightly, he was playing for Girona against City in a pre-season or I was watching a couple of his games when I was in Spain and I was really, really impressed with him. I thought, well, why is he not back? Especially yeah. this prior to signing Kyle Walker. Yeah. Thinking, why is he not back? With us, good cover for Zaba, blah, blah, blah. But this, you know, if you've got a stuck down manager turning around and saying, I'm not happy with his performance or his attitude. It's is, that, is, that, is that telling a different story? Is that is that uh, Have City seen that and hence why yeah, they sold him? I mean, City are very, very, they do their due diligence. They're very, very concerned yeah. in the background and the um, attitude, the mental attitude of players um, and their friends um, and the company they keep. So it could be that that's the reason. I mean, both Angelino and Mafia, we I think we thought might come back to City as understudies give them a season and around the first team training to see whether they can make it at City and be yeah. part of that two great players for every position. But, you know, if you're not going to be at the right level, you've got to be sold. Um, I hope he can bounce back. I hope it's just the Stuttgart manager trying to give some tough love. Um, yeah. Pick him up the Maybe. backside and uh, get, him, get, get his uh, backside into gear. So, now, fingers crossed, because I, I thought he was a, a very, very decent player. Yeah, me too. But anyway, moving on quickly. Um, another one who I thought, great attitude. And this is one thing I think, think this kid has got. And I, I really do believe that, unlike you don't hear the rumours like you heard of Maffeo, and that's Bursant Selina. Um, we ended up selling him after a loan move to FC20, and then he went to I- Ipswich. Yeah. He went there and then went to Swansea for 3.1 yeah. million. 26 games, four goals. Uh, and he, he made a comment in the uh, media, was it earlier on in the week or last week, where he turned around and said, you know, I'd love to come back and prove my worth. Yeah. And he show City that free. they missed out. And that's the type of attitude you need to have. That sort of attitude can push you beyond your own level of talent. Yeah. Players have got certain level of talent, and you, you, you've, you've had your, your talks about your Ravel Morrisons, for instance, who've got exceptional talent, but their attitude and the mental capacity, or whatever the, the problems are, uh, and, and um, lets them down. But with a kid, he's got something to prove. That's going to push him on further and further yeah. beyond whatever his, his uh, you know, talents um, that his natural talent has given him. So. Good on the lad, and look, we'd love him to come back because if he comes back, then he's bloody brilliant. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I always he was a bit of a academy favourite of mine, so I always had a bit of a soft spot for Selena. I just hope he does really well at Swansea. Moving on, not going to talk too much about this because we've done it to death, and that's Brahim Diaz, yeah. uh, two million, only got sort of five games for City, uh, moved to Real Madrid. He's had that one appearance for them. Uh, <laughs> what's he's that? Taking their squad now. He's not what? Sorry. He's not even made their bench. Well, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, like I said, we've we've done the Brahim Diaz thing to death, but we got twenty two million pounds for it. Well, for somebody that, who's yeah. played five first team appearances, that's that's incredible. We got fifteen and a half, and the rest will be with uh, bonuses and stuff. But yeah. the fifteen and a half is is fantastic on its yeah. own. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Um. Which leads me on to the next one, which uh, we I was confirmed yesterday, which we've been talking about for the last week, and we've been actually saying the transfer fee was eleven million pounds yeah. and not five to seven million pounds like other people were trying to make out, and that was Rabi Matondo uh, yeah. officially signed for Schalke yesterday. Um, I find it amazing, absolutely incredible. This is an academy kid who's not made it anywhere anywhere near the first team. Yeah. Getting eleven point three million pounds for him. Huh? Yeah, now, I can understand the Jaden Sancho. When you when you look, we got eight million quid for Jaden Sancho. We're getting eleven point three million pounds for Rabi Matondo. Jaden Sancho was an England international, acclaimed international player. Rabi Matondo's played for Wales. I understand that, but only a few games. One game. Uh, but but yeah, but you know, Sancho Foden. 
they were the ones that were sort of the bright spot. So when we got £8 million, you think, well, it's £8 million for Sancho. To get £11.3 million for somebody who potentially would not get anywhere near the first team squad in the next two years, I think it's an incredible bit of business. Well, the landscape seems to have changed. Because after the Sancho, after Sancho, I think after yeah. Sancho going eight or ten million quid, whatever it was, and the impact he's had, and he's yeah. not worth. I mean, I've heard. Uh, <laughs> no, I know somebody said hundred million pound. Eighty actually. million. Uh, what? Forty, sixty million. No, please. You know, for for eighty million, you can go and get some of the top talent around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Sancho is at that level. He's got potential, and I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'll, gu- I'll guarantee you now, if if uh, Borussia Dortmund put him on the market for a hundred million, they won't get it. Okay, yeah. I think uh, Barcelona, who paid a lot of money for Usman Dembele and uh, Philip Coutinho, have seen the errors of their ways. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a bit more sensible now. So, 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 I, I, Schalke probably looked at uh, Jadon Sancho. They looked at. There's another kid from Arsenal that went over there on loan. Reese yeah. Nelson. Reese Nelson went out too. Yeah, and so they've looked good, and they, and so obviously they've been watching this kid for more than a year, um, and uh, apparently uh, I, I actually looked at his interview uh, over at Schalke, um, and he's you know, he's he's known of Schalke and been interested uh, in them since he was aged eleven. <laughs> Soft spot for Schalke, um, so but. I think they just see it as we get this kid. He is very, very fast. Um, he likes to dribble. Maybe that's the kind of person they want. And they can also see if this kid can make it, he's worth 30, 40 million quid within a year yeah. or two. So I think it's business as well. I mean, I, I, I just, I just think it's, I just think it's fantastic business for Man City. Eleven point three million pounds. I find is just. Even in this day and age, for somebody who's never played or getting anywhere near the squad, I think, I think it's wonderful business. And we know we've got a, a, a sell-on clause. We know we've got a buyback clause in there. Let somebody else develop it. Let yeah. him develop somewhere else, rather. It's a waste, waste of a talent yeah. staying at City when he's not going to get anywhere near the um, he's not going to get anywhere near the first no. team squad in the no. next 18 months to two years. There's no chance. Well, the fun, one other thing is that I think some Cardiff fans were unhappy because they said if he'd played for City, Cardiff would have got something else. Yeah, well, they were saying, oh, City didn't play him because... He was no, 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 it wasn't good enough. No. I, I, that was my answer. He, what, he wasn't, wasn't developed, developed enough, yeah. Yeah, to be... He might have the talent, but he's not... And he, he can't push somebody outside just to get him a game. You know, Brian, when Brian Diaz was here, Brian Diaz was a level above. And if Brian Diaz can't play, what chances Rabi got? Yeah. Uh, well, good luck to him. You yeah. Know, you know, I hope he does really well. Well, moving on, and finally, the last thing we want to talk about is just really um, Mangala. Uh, it seems that it doesn't matter how hard we try, nobody wants him. Um, his contract is up in June uh, this summer. Uh, I think he's been banded around to Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, and it just seems that he's going to end up staying until the summer, running down his contract, and uh, he'll leave on a free. Uh, in the summer, um, which is a shame for him because I think he's been pretty much fit for the last 12 months, so 18 months. But He was injured at Everton, where he went to on loan. Yeah, yeah. well, that was, when was that? That was last season. 15, 15 months ago. But he's, he's, been, ago. he's not been in great nick, let's say. I think he is no. back. But, but he's, he's, it looks like he's, he's, um, he's basically going... No way. I mean, he's going to just... Maybe we could use him in the FA Cup uh, if, he, if he stays fit and whatever else. I think it's too late now. Uh, yeah. If we're going to use him, we'd have used him against uh, yeah. Rob. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. we've moved on. Yeah. Uh, and so, rather... I mean, that was a a bit of a... That was a waste of money. I mean, that was £42 million. Pounds. Was uh, whatever it was. Uh, uh, but Anyway... We wish him. He's, a, he's been a city player, so we wish him luck and uh, what he does in the future. And he'll uh, he'll get a nice signing on for you yeah. from somewhere, uh, probably in Europe. So that brings us to the end of sort of the ins and the outs of uh, of uh, this season so far. Like I said this is transfer deadline day. We've got now uh, seven hours, just over seven hours left before the window closes. Apart from the Luciano Costa uh, video uh, player that we discussed. Yeah. Earlier, ex-Boca player, currently with DC United. 
and he's in Europe at the moment awaiting a medical and there's several, just to recap, there's several clubs involved. PSG definitely wants yeah. him. Man City have been named as being a team that wants him. Um, and another club, uh, with, other than that, there's not much more to really report. So, uh, okay, so um, that's basically the ins and the outs uh, so far. So, like I said about uh, Luciano Costa, he could be the uh, the only player that we actually sign in this particular window. But by the sounds of it, it looks like PSG are desperate for him. But City have been named, so we never know. So when we look at the ins and the outs, and remember that... Uh, we spent £60 million, pounds, our highest ever outlay on a player for, for Riyad Mahrez in the summer. When we look and look at what we've actually paid for players this season so far and uh, the money that we've recouped uh, from all of those players we spoke about earlier, the actual outlay is £27.0 million. Pounds. Yeah, so that's not a lot of money for a club you know, when we say self-sustaining clubs and financial fair play and everything else, and we get told that we spend this and yeah. we're, we're, you know, we're the net net spend champions of <laughs> the Premier League, like Liverpool fans do, we've literally spent in since the summer 27 million well, quid. I actually think it's going to be lower than that because obviously, like you said, there's all those undisclosed fees. Yes, we don't know what they are. And every single, just probably... Just about every single kid that goes out on loan, we get a fee for. So, for instance, we, don't, we, don't, we can't we add those, we, Yeah, we can't add those fees in because yeah. we don't know those fees. Yeah. But I don't know what one was um, last year, and I think it was about three hundred and fifty or four hundred thousand. And if you take ten of them, there's another four million quid. You yeah. know. So that figure. Hello. I'm still there. That figure itself, um, that figure could come down to anywhere between 10 and 15 million quid. Exactly. You know, when you look at what we spent in 2018-19. Uh, so, all that's going to bode well for is how much money we're going to spend in the summer. So, maybe the planning is, you know, let's get a load of money back in the bank. Let's look to the summer where better business can be yeah, done. Definitely. Not in January. Uh, and let's go for the real targets that we want rather than trying to throw stupid money away on signings. You know, very few come off in January. I know Aimer at Laporte is is uh, the exception, but very few come off in January that go on to be an integral part of the club. So, what's your thoughts on our our approach as a as a club? I've got two minutes, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. Okay. Our, our approach is the same model as Chelsea. It's a uh... It's a business model approach. Is you're not you're looking to develop the player. So on a human level and a, and a player level, you are developing them. They're going to have good education at City. These kids, um, you know, the top school in Manchester. So whatever happens, if they don't make it as a footballer, whether they're not good enough or they're injured or whatever, they'll have a great education. Yeah. If they can make it at a top level as a footballer and, and play for City, fantastic. Uh, but each and every one of these kids that's coming through now. Has a career generally has a career in football. Even the the ones who are the weakest are still ending up in the League One and League Two. So they're yeah. getting a good football grinding, a good football education, a good academic education. And you, you, we've heard of kids that didn't make it uh, as a footballer, but academically they went on and did something great because of what City had given them. So play, people still want to come to City's academy because it seemed to be the best educationally and the best training facilities and the medical facilities and everything else. And you've still got that that chance, that glimmer of hope that you can make it through the first team training and make it, maybe make it through all the way. So it's, it's a great model for kids to come to, to play for City. If they don't make it here, City are very happy to quickly move them on to develop them because they're the loans that the players go out for. They're there to, they're there to develop the player as yeah. an individual. Um, and so, as you said, it's a business model. City are going to get plenty of money every year from this and once every maybe might be once every three four five years we'll unearth a diamond like uh, phil forden who, who comes all the way through we'll unearth people like brahim diaz phil for um sorry um Jaden sancho and other players who will go for 10 15 20 million quid because they're not going to make it at city so all in all you've got to look at it and say it's absolutely fantastic for man city as a football club so it's like almost like a money ball approach yeah. 
You know, yeah. it's like we what works, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What can we get in for the right time right now that is useful for us as a club, but long term we can sell here, which will yeah. add to here, yeah. and we can buy this player, and that's our long term plan is to go for this guy. But ideally, it's their FFP because we want to be compliant. We need sort of 30, 40 million quid in from somewhere. Well, if we do this, there's 50 million quid. Yeah. Only needs a 20 million quid outlay. We're well within FFP. We get everybody off our backs, all the nonsense that goes on with it, if FFP ever exists in the future. But um, yeah, I agree with you. I think it's the right model. Uh, I think we've got some smart people uh, who are overlooking and overseeing this model, even though you do still get some strange, strange City fans talking about cheeky Beeristein and Fran Soriano are useless and that we need we didn't get a left back. We didn't get I mean it's absolute garbage. Um these guys are absolute professionals, I believe, are running the club in the right way. Uh and they've got the best manager um underneath them uh, in Pep Guardiola. So listen, I want to say I know you're busy. I know uh, you've got to get off a massive thank you to Ray. Cheers guys. Hope you really enjoyed it. Like I said just a quick recap. The only person that we spoke about now, well over an hour ago before sort of Manchester Evening News broke it, is this guy, Luciano Acosta from DC United. Whether it'll happen, he's in Europe, waiting a medical for one of three clubs, PSG, City and another. We'll wait and see. But anyway, have a great transfer deadline window day. Ray, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care. This is Andy from Man City Fan TV and we'll see you soon.